Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Watt Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. The other really, really powerful tool that I want to talk a little bit about is the wireless remote configuration tool. This is the LMCT100. This is an extremely powerful tool and I really need you guys to spread the word on this because the industry is not used to this tool. It doesn't exist in the industry. This is two-way IR communication and that's a huge thing. Not only does it talk to our devices like occupancy sensors and dimmers and switches, but they talk back to it and they'll report their status, they'll report what they're configured as. Makes it really convenient for the user. So what are the things you can do with this? Button configurations you can change, dimming configurations, and adjust light level. These are the, the three menu items that are specific to dimming. Okay. Some of the other menu items can be used for the switches and that sort of thing, but these are specific to dimming. Since digital lighting management is a distributed lighting control system, it is kind of important to understand that button configuration, when I change button configuration, all those changes live in the buttons. When I change dimming configuration, that lives in the dimmer. And for our purposes, this room controller is the dimmer. Okay? And adjust light level is just kind of a cool little temporary feature that I'll show you about, and I'll show you why I think it's so cool. Okay, so button configuration. You can see on the screen that I've, I've shown again that we have three basic button types. The rocker paddle, the scene button, and the load button. And I'm, I'm showing you an example on this screen where I've taken my scene switch and I've reconfigured this bottom button to be a load button. Why would I do that? I use this a lot in classrooms at the teaching wall where the whiteboard is. And we use this as the teacher switch. And so what we'll often do is leave the first three button scenes so I can have general, AV, quiet time, those kind of scenes. And then I'll turn the last button into a load button and I'll bind it to the whiteboard because the whiteboard is typically not dimmed. It's an on-off only load. So this gives the teacher control of the whiteboard. If we hit the all off button, it'll turn off the whiteboard. We hit the all on button, it'll turn on all the lights including the whiteboard. So it's a really nice feature to have in there for the teacher. Button configuration, what it basically does is tell you everything you want to know about the button. So if you look at the next slide here, what we've done is I'm showing you how you would configure a load button. I want to kind of show you how this works. So here's the menu items of the LMCT. So I'm going to toggle down to button configuration, and I'm going to point it at my set of buttons. When I do this, what you're going to see is all the LEDs on the buttons will blink. It's waiting for me to tell it what button do you want to configure. So I'm going to hit button configuration, all my LEDs are blinking, and I'm going to hit a load button. And what comes back to the screen is it says load button, okay? Now I want you to notice that what I've got on the LMCT showing on the screen here is exactly what I've recreated on the PowerPoint presentation, okay? So hopefully now you believe me that, that this is getting that information, and I'll switch to just using the PowerPoint for clarity. So if I were to hit a load button, you can see that what I have the ability to adjust, I can change the type. I can make it into a load, it is a load button, I can make it into a scene button. And if I were to arrow right or left when I was on that field, the selection I would have is scene one, scene two, scene three, all the way up to scene 16. Every DLM room has up to 16 scenes that you can access. Each of these scene switches has four scene buttons, so you can only access four scenes for it, but you can access any four scenes you want, okay? And you can have more scene switches and put scene 5, 6, and 12 on another one if you wanted to. They don't have to be in order. It's not scene banks. You can also see that we can change the mode. By default, a load button is toggle action, press on, press off. If you want it to be an on only or an off only button, you can change it right here. We also have separate fade on and fade off times. This is the time it takes for a dimmed load when I turn it on. How long does it take to fade on? I'll turn this off, and you'll see that by default, we've set it at two seconds. So when I hit all on, it's going to take two seconds for those lights to turn on and ramp up to their full brightness. Okay? This is where you would change that if you wanted. Why would you want to change it, and why are they separate? Let's take the example of the teacher switch that I have. So, I've got a keypad at the front door of the classroom, and then I've got my teacher switch, which is, which is a teaching wall. If I'm the teacher and I'm about to leave the classroom, I could set the all off button to have a 10 second fade off. That way, when I pressed off, I have 10 seconds to walk out of the room. The lights will slowly be fading down over that 10 seconds, but I'm not leaving in the dark and tripping over desks. Just one example of what to do with separate fade on and fade off times. While we're on the subject of fade times, how long of a fade time do you need? 
Some manufacturers give you up to 60 seconds, some up to 60 minutes. How long is the longest fade time you can see that you need? I'll cheat a little bit here and I'll give you an example. A restaurant. When you're in a restaurant and you're having lunch and maybe it's getting late and they're about to transition to happy hour, they want you to know that it's happy hour, but they don't want you to leave. They want you to start drinking, of course. So they'll have those booth lights fade over 30 or 40 minutes so that you don't notice it happen. Have you ever been in a restaurant and you're eating and you suddenly see the lights dim? The first thing that most people do is look at their watch and go, oh yeah, it's getting late, I gotta go. The restaurant doesn't like that. They want you to stay there and drink. Okay, so now that I've done that, what's the longest fade time you think you need? Well, we didn't want to limit you too much, so with digital lighting management, the options you have are from zero seconds to 18 hours. I'm really hoping that's gonna satisfy most of your applications. My favorite application is the, uh, the, the chicken farm. You know, they've done some research. Chickens lay one egg a, a day. If you can make a chicken think that there's eight days in a week, you'll increase your, your egg production by one egg every week. That's used to a chicken farmer. And you can do that by simulating sunrise and sunset and shortening every day to about 18 hours, okay? So these are huge applications. They're key. I want you to go out and look for them. They're out there. All right, all kidding aside. We just didn't want you to be limited. Now, if I were to hit a scene button when I'm doing button configuration, it's gonna display this screen and show you that, oh, you've tapped a scene button. I'm set up for scene one. If you want, you can change me to a load button, change me to scene two, change me to whatever you want. Now, mode for a scene button defaults to recall scene. By default, it's not toggle action. If I push the button, I recall scene one. If I push it again, I recall scene one. That's just what it does, okay? I can change that. I can make it press once for scene one, press again to turn scene one off. It's really easy to do right here. I also have a feature called lock scene. And what lock scene does is once I've got my room set up and I like that scene and I don't want anybody to change it, I just hit lock scene yes. And now scene one is locked and no one can record a new scene one, okay? It's a really useful feature in some of these classrooms. Um, I've got another example of why we would change a button configuration and it's involving this two button switch. We use this switch a lot at the entrance of a classroom, okay? Because there's a lot of lead classrooms that are going on now and they have this thing called general and AV mode that they want to put the classroom in. What I would do is take a two button switch like this and I would make those, both of these buttons scene buttons, okay? And this first button would be general and the second button would be AV. I would record those scenes and then I would change this button type. I would change it from a load button to scene one, and this from a load button to scene two, and then I would change the mode. Instead of recall scene, it would be recall slash off. So I could walk into the classroom, press it, general lighting comes on, press it again, it turns off. Press this, we go to AV mode or a dimmed level. Press it again, it turns off. Once I've got that set up, I'll lock both those buttons so those pesky kids can't change settings on you. I may leave those buttons unlocked at my teaching wall on the LMSW 105, the scene switch that I put at the teaching wall, so that if the teacher wants to change those levels, the teacher can, but the students can't. Okay, it's a nice little security feature, I guess I'll call it. You'll also see on here separate fade, on, uh, fade off times for scenes. We've already talked about what's important about that. The third button type is the rocker button. There's not a lot you can change about a rocker button. Again, that's on the dimmers here. Rocker buttons are load buttons. They're always meant to turn on and off loads, ramp up and ramp down loads. So basically what, what we're going to give you is separate fade on and fade off times, and then a ramp rate. What is a ramp rate? And you can see on the screen, 17% per second is how it's expressed. It's a weird figure. Basically, we surveyed all the dimmers in the industry, and what we discovered is if I, put, if I press and hold a dimmer, it takes about six seconds for that load to go from the very minimum to the very maximum. If you take that and divide that into 100, it's 17, roughly 17% 17 per second. So that's what our default ramp rate is. You can change it. If you really want to annoy your neighbor, you can go into his room and change that to, oh, 1% per second. Now when he goes to raise his lights, it'll take 100 seconds to get to 100%. Really makes him uh, happy with you. I'm kind of like that, sorry. Okay, so that's button configuration. 